tragedy claims the life of Canadian Greg Moore. He was uh, everything that is good about this sport. Talented, committed, courageous, fit. Everything that's good, everything that symbolizes what Champ Car Racing stands for, I think was embodied in, uh, in, in Greg Moore. Welcome to Sports Desk, everyone, along with Bob Pronick. I'm Gino Retta. And Gino, sadly, we begin tonight with some very tragic news. Yes, Greg Moore, one of the most promising young drivers this country has ever produced, was killed at Fontana, California today. Moore died as a result of massive head and internal injuries after his car went off the track at more than 350 kilometers an hour and slammed into a concrete retaining wall. A caution. The following video is graphic and disturbing. Moore lost control coming off the second turn. The car rocketed sideways through a grassy area before slamming into the inside retaining wall on the backstretch. The car shattered as the driver's tub containing Moore flipped several times before coming to a complete stop. Moore was treated immediately on the scene by CART medical officials. He was taken to the infield medical center and then to hospital by helicopter. The crash occurred on the first lap of a restart. According to an unidentified cart source, a right side tire in Moore's car deflated when he made contact with the wall in turn one. Ninety minutes later, cart director of medical operations, Dr. Steve Olvey, made the tragic announcement. The helicopter with Greg Moore on board. I regret to announce that driver Greg Moore has been pronounced dead at Loma Linda Hospital. He died of massive head and internal injuries. Uh, he was pronounced dead at 21 minutes after 1 o'clock. Flags at the track were lowered to half-mast as the race went on. Car Chief Steward Wally Dallenbach canceled all post-race celebrations. Now, as you just saw, the flags at the racetrack were lowered to half-mast and the race continued. There were no plans to cancel the event. Adrian Fernandez was the, was the eventual winner and Juan Montoya captured the overall driver's title. But it was Greg Moore's tragic accident that dominated everyone's thoughts following the race. <laughs> it's so hard because uh, um, <clears throat> Greg <clears throat> was such a good friend of us. We've been racing for a while and uh, we have shared so many <clears throat> good moments inside and outside the racetrack. And uh, This is a tragedy uh, for all of us. I, th I started the cross finish line and uh, actually I thought I won. And uh, Bob came on the radio and said I have a very bad news to tell you. And uh, I, th I, th I had no idea. And no idea. And uh, you know, it's no idea. I think in it, I think everybody that's ever driven one of these cars can tell you that uh, maybe he's just not burdened with things anymore, you know, and not uh, not going to worry about these senseless things that we do, worrying about shock absorbers and wings and rules and. And fights and you know our sport seems I think fairly insignificant in times like this you know it's pretty bad you know it's really bad you know it's, it's happened again this year Greg was a great guy you know I'm really sorry for his family and everything you know you know he, he didn't deserve to die obviously a situation such as today is, is one that uh, you can't possibly prepare for uh, there are no prepared speeches um, on behalf of the team and of uh, our partners of players, uh, we would like to uh, express our sincere sympathies to uh, Greg's family. Um, he was a fine young man, a fine individual, and somebody that had become a very close family member of our team, and we all uh, miss him greatly. Greg was uh, one of the new young tigers of champ car racing. As I said a few minutes ago, clearly, and unequivocally, a champion of tomorrow. Uh, he was... Uh, everything that is good about this sport talented committed courageous fit everything that's good everything that symbolizes what champ car racing stands for i think was embodied in uh, in, in greg moore so it is a 
a very, very profound loss indeed. He's a, uh, a young man of great talent, as, as, as his dad said in his chat with him in the hospital. He really loved life, loved having fun. Uh, he really was looking forward to, to the race. He was, he was a competitor. He wanted to race. It is with uh, profound sadness that on behalf of California Speedway and International Speedway Corporation that we extend our heartfelt sympathies to the Moore family, to the team members of the Forsyth team, and to Greg's fans around the world. Uh, this is the first fatality that has occurred in the three season history of California Speedway. And without question, this is the saddest day in the history of the Speedway. So everybody knows what a great loss it is. It's a loss period, let alone the fact that he was a, just a great young man and uh, had a great future ahead of him and already had achieved quite a, quite a few things in a very short period of time. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I hate this sport when it's like this. You know, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, the guy's a great guy. We hung out, we did things together, a few things together, and sat next to him in the driver's meeting yesterday. And just, I'm shocked. I mean, I'm just totally shocked. And it hasn't hit me, I don't think. When a tragedy of this magnitude occurs, everyone involved has the same goal. Find out what happened and do everything humanly possible to prevent it from ever happening again. I wouldn't at this stage want to speculate as to uh, exactly how this accident occurred. We, we all saw the, the aftermath, but I'd, I'd want to look very carefully at what occurred, how it occurred, before making any comment. Uh, but what I can tell you is this, we're going to look at it in, in great, great detail, as, as, as you'd expect, um, and, and see, if, see if, if there are any lessons to, to learn uh, from the, this incident. Um, this does have the appearance, I'm not going to speculate about it, but it has the appearance of being a tragic racing accident. But I, at this stage, I wouldn't say more than that. I want to... Uh, uh, get into it with our uh, officials and obviously with, with Scott and his representatives to, to look at this in detail. We did have a uh, brace uh, made uh, for his hands, very small, uh, just to keep the uh, fracture uh, comfortable. Uh, we tested him yesterday afternoon, uh, as some of you may know, in the car uh, to see how it went. And uh, he was very excited about it afterwards. He felt fine. We re-x-rayed him, re-examined him at that time. Uh, we again uh, saw him in the morning. And by we, I mean Dr. Terry Trammell, who uh, really makes the orthopedic uh, decisions. He's chief orthopedic surgeon, as, as I think you're all aware, uh, in CART. Uh, he and I examined him again this morning. Uh, he felt very comfortable. Finger looked good, it looked very good on x-ray, so we allowed him to compete in the warm-up. In other words, we had several steps in this process. Uh, he uh, ran in the warm-up uh, without any difficulty whatsoever. Uh, we again examined him uh, following the warm-up. Uh, he was extremely excited about racing, uh, very confident, uh, felt that the hand uh, would give him no difficulty. Uh, we feel uh, very strongly that uh, the hand was uh, not related to the cause of the accident. Speed and the element of danger under control are a big part of what draws drivers and fans to auto racing. But when those two same factors go out of control, the results can be very catastrophic. Our CART reporter Didier Scranton was trackside when Greg Moore spun out, and he spoke earlier with Vic Router and Teresa Cruz. It was a really frightening moment for uh, everybody. The worst part, and when I um, saw the tape again, it was an horrible accident. He didn't have any chance to escape alive from that kind of accident. You have to remember that he was going 370 kilometers per hour when he lost control of his, uh, of his car, and he flipped just before hitting the wall. So um, he really hit hard head on, and uh, I think that personally it was an instant uh, death uh, if... Uh, I can say so. It, this is the kind of a situation where I hate doing it, uh, doing the job that I'm doing, especially when uh, you get along with somebody uh, for five years and uh, it, it, it ends this way. DJ, it's uh, Vic Router. I suggested earlier before you joined us that if they're going to analyze this, I don't think as much focus will be on the fact he had a, a broken finger and maybe raced with an injured hand. I think the focus once again will be on the speed of these cars and how they can in fact slow them down. Would you agree? Uh, definitely. The, uh, the fact that he was injured driving the car uh, w was not really a factor because they really took care professionally about the situation. They, they sent him on the track yesterday for a special 15, hour, uh, 15 minutes uh, test and this morning during the warm up, everything was uh, definitely okay uh, in that point of view. And he, he was doing a great race coming back from 27 at the start and I think that he was uh, close to the 10th place when, when the, uh, the accident happened. The speed that they reach here at uh, Fontana is incredible. The fact that there was no protection, I mean, uh, like tires in front of that wall, inside wall, proved that there was uh, some, something lacking there. But, you know, um, 
they, they, they will have to think about the kind of speed that they're reaching in, in, in those kinds of racetrack. Uh, but, you know, we, it, what is terrible is those things have to happen to see that there was something uh, uh, wrong in, in this situation. Didier, did you get a chance to talk to Greg Moore at all from the time of his accident on Saturday with his motor scooter when he was hit by that pickup truck to just before getting into the car today? Did you get a chance to talk to him about uh, any pain that he might have been in with his hand? Uh, definitely. He just explained us after that 15-minute test that he had uh, at 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon when all the activities was closed up for the rest of the, uh, the drivers. And... Uh, he said to his team, uh, we're going to be okay, and then we talked after, and he was laughing. He says it, it hurts a little bit, uh, especially because of the uh, uh, stitches that he has on his uh, on three of his finger, because his, um, he had a broken bone inside his hand, and uh, they were able to um, froze the uh, the area where the bone was, uh, was broken. Uh, so there was no problem at all for that. They even built a, a, a special glove for him, and, and then uh, he, he was in a... In a perfect control of the situation uh, if we're talking about his, uh, his injury at his end. And I asked him, uh, uh, the last question that I asked him, and the last time that I talked to him, uh, I asked him, um, is, it, is it really worth it? And he says, I'm a driver, I belong in the cockpit, I think that I have a shot to win that race, uh, even if I'm starting dead last. So that was the kind of driver he was. If uh, you believe, like so many, that uh, Gilles Villeneuve was the greatest driver this country has ever produced. Um, I'll suggest to you that Greg Moore, considering what he has done in a short period of time, along with Paul Tracy, but I think because of Tracy's age now, Moore was tapped to go even further and may have been a Formula One driver eventually. We know that he had had talks. Would you equate his career in some regards with uh, Gilles Villeneuve? Oh, he was a really, uh, he was a phenomenon. Uh, by himself, you know, he was in kart series at year t uh, 20 years old. He was the youngest ever driver to win a race uh, in, the, in the kart series. Um, uh, he was not only a brilliant driver, he was a, a brilliant person. He was so smart in the way he was approaching the, uh, every race, every situation. Um, he wanted to win the championship in the kart series before uh, moving to Formula One. He had some offer at a certain time, but he, he was really enjoying himself in, in North America or on this side of the ocean. And he wanted to um, um, uh, rewrite, if I can say so, the, the record book. Uh, you know, he, was, he wanted to be a hunter first uh, before being yeah. a, a, a Villeneuve or a Senna uh, after. And uh, it's really sad that he won't be able to achieve... Uh, uh, his Time for a short break, but our extensive coverage of the death of Greg Moore will continue in a moment. When we come back, we'll hear from residents of his hometown in Maple Ridge, B.C., who have only just begun to deal with the news. That and much more right after this break. continue our extensive coverage of the tragic death of Greg Moore in Sunday's Marlboro 500. And while it's easy to talk about Moore's success on the track, we should also take the time to clarify he was one of the most well-respected personalities off the track as well. Few on the circuit knew him better than trackside reporter Jan Vikas. Earlier today, he spoke with our Vic Router and Teresa Cruz, and they began by asking of how difficult it is to believe that Greg Moore is actually gone. It is uncomprehensible in Canada, but it's uncomprehensible in the world, uh, especially here in the kart community. Uh, personally, for me, Greg Moore was one of my students uh, when I taught as a racing instructor, and we actually together uh, taught Greg how to drive on ovals, and we know that Greg Moore was really the master of the ovals. But I think it was probably said best or, or not said by Adrian Fernandez, who won this race. He came into the jubilation of the crew, patting him on the head for a job well done. And when he learned of Greg Moore, the tears just flowed from his eyes as they did from so many people up and down pit road here. And he declined to comment and was sequestered back with so many of the other drivers uh, just, just in shock that something like this could happen because Greg was so, so popular. 
Jan, this is uh, Vic Router. Thanks for joining us. Uh, is it too early to ask the question what happened? Uh, some people suggesting, as Richie Hearn did, because it was almost the same spot in turn two, uh, the turbulence, these cars maybe going too fast. Uh, what's your take on it? Well, I, I think you have to be too, you know, you don't want to be quick to jump to conclusions. Uh, obviously, one of the questions is, should Greg Moore have been driving with his injured right hand? And um, I can tell you that just prior to the crash, they spoke to Greg on the radio and said, how is your hand? How is, how is the arm feeling? He says, fine, it's not a problem. With the adrenaline out here, I don't even feel any pain. I would say that was not a factor. Uh, for Richie Hearn, obviously both his hands were working fine. He got caught in the turbulence and had a similar accident. And, you know, the speeds are fast and racing is dangerous and these things just can't happen. That may be the only explanation we have. Yeah, and in watching the race, we had heard that the, his hand was actually injected. They went right down into the bone with some medicine. Possibly, could there have been some freezing added in this injection that he took prior to the race? Uh, it's unlikely. Again, I don't think that his hand had anything to do with it. The question people will ask is, was it worth Greg Moore getting into the car to drive? And my answer would be, Greg Moore, if he thought he had any opportunity whatsoever to drive, he would do it. He, he lived life to live it on the edge, to drive the way he did. That's why we loved him so much. And, and I think that Greg Moore would say that, hey, you know, it's racing. I took a risk. He even said in an inter interview that I did with him yesterday, he said that, you know, sometimes when you're young, you do things that are crazy and are stupid. But, but Greg Moore, that's what he lived for. Well, and certainly every driver does. And you've been told, as I have, no driver would get into the car if he thought of the eventuality that... Uh, befell him today, Greg Moore. So tell us about him as the driver. What made him so good? He wins the first race and he struggled. The Mercedes was not uh, up to par this year, either was their Reynard chassis. But what makes him or made him such a good driver? One with this enormous potential, people said. Uh, it's hard to put your finger on it, Vic. Uh, he just was good. He was gifted, in my view, by God to be able to do an awesome job behind the wheel. And today, God took him from us. Uh, but there's no way to put your finger on a natural talent. He just was always that way. And he had it at such a young age. All of his records, he was the youngest Indy Lights champion, the youngest winner in kart. Uh, he just had the talent. And he didn't flaunt it. He wasn't arrogant. And that's why we loved him so much. Word of Greg Moore's passing is devastating for anyone who met the young man. And it's especially distressing for his hometown of Maple Ridge, B.C., Farhan Lauji reports. Reaction to Greg Moore's death in his hometown of Maple Ridge was that of shock and disbelief. It seemed everyone in this town had followed Moore's career from go-karts to the kart circuit and had a difficult time accepting Sunday's tragedy. I'm devastated. I just uh, never thought that would ever happen to him. He's such a great person, you know. It's uh, just really shocking. Um, he actually went to school uh, at uh, Meadow Ridge. My son went there, and uh, it's just really saddened to, to hear that, uh, that it occurred. It was a tragic loss. I think he was a great influence on the people here. He's very friendly. He, he's been here for years, as far as I know. I've only been here four years myself, but everybody talks very highly of this man, and, and something like this, I'm, I just can't believe something could have happened like this. Fellow Maple Ridge resident Ryan Jones is a budding race car driver and knew Moore well. The 17-year-old had one day hoped to become the next Greg Moore. He's always been a really big role model for me. He's, he's been the race car driver for Maple Ridge. He's who I would like to one day be. Um, I just, I didn't know what to say. Um, then it kind of hit me and now I'm just, I'm just kind of, I just, I can't believe it. When it first happened, I was, I was kind of questioning it, but, uh, but now I kind of look at it in a positive light that uh, at least at least he was doing something he really enjoyed doing when it happened, and I, I'd like to be in that position. I think too, if 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 anything was going to happen to me, I'd like to be in that same position. While he had never won the Molson Indy Vancouver, Moore's name had become synonymous with that race since joining the kart circuit. Moore had been instrumental in the promotion of this race and in its track design. Race GM Stuart Ballantyne had this to say. The tragic death of Greg Moore has left a hole for all of those who knew him and the millions more who watched this hometown hero as he brought racing to a whole new generation of motorsports fans. In every way, Greg was a winner both on and off the track, contributing countless hours to local charities and other worthwhile causes. Today, our heartfelt sympathy goes out to his family, and while we can offer little else at this moment, I want them to know how much he meant to all of us. 
Out of respect for Greg's family, this is the only statement we will be making this afternoon. In Maple Ridge and the rest of the Lower Mainland, Greg Moore's face was as recognizable as Mark Messier or Sharif Abdurrahim. Not because of the sport he competed in, but because of the fact that people in this area had a chance to watch him grow up. At only 24 years of age, his future appeared so bright. And while he never won an IndyCar race in Vancouver, in this part of Canada, Greg Moore will always be considered a winner and a hero. Farhan Lalji, TSN, Maple Ridge. Thanks, Farhan. Greg Moore's father, stepmother, and girlfriend were at the hospital when he was pronounced dead. The family planned to return to Vancouver late Sunday evening. At this point, there are no details on a memorial service. As soon as we get any news, we'll pass that information on to you. We'll take a look back at Greg Moore's career in a moment. death continues to touch the lives of sports fans across the country. Our staff is preparing a 60-minute tribute of Greg Moore's life and career for Monday night at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. And we're now joined in studio by our host of TSN Racing, Vic Ryder. Vic, obviously the first question I've got to ask you is the injury to Greg Moore's yeah. hand, the broken bone in his hand, the sore hip. Mm -hmm. Should he have been racing on Sunday at all? In my humble opinion, yes, because the doctors okayed it. They put him through a 15 lap test on Saturday afternoon and it was all right. So yes, he got an approval. Now I know that some viewer might suggest, but wait a second, you're driving a car at 235 miles per hour uh, and you're using a broken hand. Well, let's give Greg Moore some credit. The professionalism of the driver, if he believed that he was endangering himself with this broken hand, he would then have been endangering the other drivers on the track. I think he would have pulled himself out. Ah, uh, but argument, and I'm going to argue with myself for a second here. He's also driving his final race for players. Maybe he didn't want to wimp out. Maybe he would have forgotten about that. I don't believe that. I think he would have said, you know what, this is not safe. The doctors said he could drive, and so let's leave it at that. He drove. This wasn't a result of his broken hand. Was it a result of lack of safety features? Because when there's an incident like this, this dramatic, this tragic, yeah. people are going to say, is enough being done for the safety of the drivers? Well, it's interesting because one of the safety devices that CART has come up with may have, in fact, been a, the direct result of what happened. It's called the Hanford device. And if I can just, in, uh, in layman's terms, think of this as the back wing of the car. What they do is to slow that car down is they put a piece like this so that when the car goes through it catches the air which is going this way and therefore creates drag and slows it down but by doing that the air comes off it swirls off think about planes they don't allow planes to land at any airport too close together because there is such turbulence off the wings same thing happens here and I believe and I think you'll find out and I, again I just this is speculation that what happened is that car and, and Richie Hearn in the same location a couple of laps earlier did the same thing he said he ran into dirty air. What happens is, Greg Moore's car comes up, he runs into this swirling air, his front wing can't negotiate it, it gets unstable, and then suddenly he just loses it, and he's along for the ride. And unfortunately, it was a ride that killed him. So is this something they have to revisit, then, in terms of a rule on the cars? That's right. I mean, who knows? Maybe these Hanford devices aren't good enough. In fact, because what they are hoping to do next year is employ these Hanford devices on all the ovals, super speedways like Fontana, Michigan, but also on smaller ovals like the one mile or so at uh, Homestead in Miami and at Nazareth. Question for you. When we knew that Greg Moore had died then during the race, it was an official race. Right. We were better than halfway through it. Should they have stopped at that point? No. I think unlike uh, Michigan a couple of years ago when, in fact, the, you know, the, the parts of the car flew over the fence, the catch fencing, and then yeah. and struck some of the spectators. When you're involving the outside, definitely. You stop it right there then. But this was in the, within the arena. This is what the sport, unfortunately, tragically, sometimes happens, uh, and the race was completed. No, I think uh, the CEO, uh, Andrew Craig, he, he handled it very well. Vic, some final thoughts on what Greg Moore meant to Canadian racing and Canadian sport in general. Well, I think it's the potential that we're not going to see here. Here was a young man at the age of 24 who had accomplished so much through his karting. He was a West Coast Formula 2000 champion. In many ways, uh, came along the same route as an idol of his in Paul Tracy came into the Indy Light Series, 
rattled off, broke the record of uh, Paul Tracy, became the youngest driver to win in the Indy Lights, won in one season, 10 races, then moved on to kart and won for the first time being the youngest ever kart driver to win a race. It's that future potential that we're not going to see. Where does he rank among Canadian drivers? Well, I think it's not unfair to say he will be ranked up as high and compared in some ways with Gilles Villeneuve, who made his mark on the international stage after he had dominated in Formula Atlantic. Is he a Gilles Villeneuve? We won't find that out. Certainly Frank Williams of Formula One had his eye on him and possibly going to Formula One. But I think it's fair to say in the future, like drivers today have done with Gilles Villeneuve, they said they wanted to emulate Villeneuve. Future drivers are going to say, I'd like to emulate Greg Moore. Vic, thank you very much for your thoughts. My pleasure. Now, Canada has lost not only a great auto racer, but a true ambassador as well. Teresa Cruz looks back on the career of the Maple Ridge Rocket. Greg Moore drove fast his whole life. With strong family support, the Maple Ridge BC native began karting at age 11. Since his first time behind the wheel, he continued to get better and go faster. In 1989, at age 15, Moore won the North American Enduro Kart Racing Championship. Two years later, he finished fourth overall in the Formula 1600 series and was named the Circuit's Rookie of the Year. 1992 brought another move to Formula 2000 West Racing, winning the series title in his rookie year. And with that, he made the jump to Indy Lights. At age 19, Moore started all 12 Indy Light events, finishing ninth in the standings. After two years of seasoning, Moore had his greatest year of racing yet. In 1995, now 20 years old, Moore won the Indy Lights driver's title. Amazingly, he won the title in just the ninth race of this season. In 12 starts, he scored 242 points, 102 more than his closest competitor, and completed every mile that season. With the greatest year in Indy Lights history, Moore got the opportunity he had worked so hard for, he was headed to kart racing. In 1996, the youngest full-time driver at age 21. Moore dazzled with his pure speed, recording his first podium finish in just his third career start. It would take some kart seasoning, but a year later at the Milwaukee Mile, Greg Moore, at 22 years, one month and 10 days, became the youngest winner in kart history. Just a week later, he completed the feat again, winning the Detroit Grand Prix. For all his success on the track, G, as he was nicknamed by his teammates, always found time for himself. He loved to return home to Maple Ridge, where he could enjoy his friends, family, and his hobbies. Outside of racing, Moore was an avid outdoorsman. He loved all that Maple Ridge offered him, including mountain biking, fly fishing, and golf. 1998 was supposed to be his year. His third car season started off well, taking the pole position in the opening race and finishing second. The next five races, he placed no less than sixth, finishing on the podium three times, including his brilliant win in Rio de Janeiro. Unfortunately, he finished fifth in the overall driver standings. 1999 started much the same, winning the first race of the season, but like last season, he struggled with his setup. The Marlboro 500 was to be his last with players. It was time to move on. He was joining the Ferrari of kart, Penske Racing for next season. In just four years of kart racing, Moore had accomplished more than many ever do. He had five career wins, five pole positions, 17 podium finishes, and 33 top 10 finishes. Greg Moore was just 24 years of age. and 
you know, it's it's hard to put into words, really. Uh, for Canadian auto racing fans, there's a natural bond between the two of you just because you you are both Canadian. Can you expand on that, uh, what it meant to the two of you? Was there ever was there a friendly rivalry there? Was there a special sort of bond in kart because of your background? Well, I think, you know, Greg and I both had a very, you know, healthy relationship in terms of racing. We were, we were always fair with each other, but, you know, I think one of the, probably one of the fondest memories really is when I first heard of Greg, when he burst on the scene in uh, in the early 90s, I was I was at that time racing for Penske, and and uh, I picked up a newspaper and, and saw this article about this this kid from from BC, and uh, he was going to be the next Formula One driver, and you know it's just. He was kind of a slimmer version of, of me, I guess. You know, he was kind of like a clone. He had the, the same same kind of haircut and and uh, round glasses. And you know, he was talking about in this this article that you know he wanted to get to to be an Indy car driver and, and race against myself and and Scott Goodyear. And you know, that was really one of the first memories I had of him. Thinking, hey, what's what's this guy doing? He's uh, trying to be like me or something but you know as the years went by we we got to be closer and closer and and I saw how much talent he had he had you know more talent in his in his pinky finger than than most drivers have and uh, could ever have and you know it's it's a tough way to lose him but you know he was out there doing what he what he loved to do and and uh, you know the last memory I have of him was was on the grid you know we uh, we talked on the grid before the race, and and uh, he, he used to always kind of—I don't know if he was teasing or, or messing with me. He used to call me Legend. He would call me Ledge for short. And, and he said, "Hey, Ledge, I'll will see you up front halfway through the race." And and uh, you know that was that was it really. There's a temptation uh, for many, uh, perhaps for yourself, to ask questions of, of how this might have happened. I know a lot of people have, have wondered about his hand injury the day before and, and others wondering about the, the rear deflector and, and how that might affect the stability of the cars. Now there have been some complaints and also about the track. Do you yourself, do you ask any questions now knowing what you do or do you and, and other racers uh, assume that this is just one of the things, one of the hazards of, of your profession, something you all risk? When you go out there. I think I think really the drivers, uh, you know, he's he was a driver and he was, you know, one of the best at it, and and he wouldn't uh, have wanted to get out of the car, you know. I know I wouldn't. I know that he had uh, a lot of determination, and wasn't ready to give up or, or stand down. He wanted to go out there and try to win that last race for for Jerry Forsythe and players, and and could have done it very easily. He's, those type of tracks, he was, you know. For his age, he was had much more uh, knowledge or a sense of knowledge, almost like a Rick Mears or an Emerson Fittipaldi. He was only 24, but when it came to to super speedways, he he far outweighed me in terms of, I guess, smarts or or how to go about uh, a 500-mile race. And and you know, he was coming to the front and trying to win the race, and that's that's what you've got to remember him as—a guy who was out there giving it everything he had. And, uh, you know, that's the best way that I can explain it. You know, he was a competitor, and he was out there competing and, and wouldn't, wouldn't give up. Paul, one final thing. Uh, I know you still must be in shock over what happened. Uh, do you see your sport any differently today, and do you think this might in any way affect the, the way you approach your sport in the future? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, this is probably the toughest situation I've ever had to go through. Uh, as a driver, I've seen some guys go over, over the, you know, the last few years, but, uh, you know, never one as close to home. And it's, uh, you know, it's hard to deal with, you know? Paul Tracy, thank you very much for your time. Now tonight, with the urging of Greg Moore's father, Kart carried on with its year-end award ceremony. Generally a celebration of the season that was this evening, there was nothing to celebrate at all. First it was the death of rookie Gonzalo Rodriguez, and then yesterday, Greg Moore. I doubt there's very much that I can tell you about Greg Moore that everyone in this room does not know already. Supremely talented, successful, Clearly, 
a champion of tomorrow. But Greg's success was more than just as a race car driver. He was well liked by his peers and enjoyed an enthusiasm for life that made him one of the founding members of CART's infamous Rat Pack. It is with a deep and profound sense of loss that I once again, as I did yesterday on your behalf, extend our deepest sympathy to Greg's family, to his friends, and to his teammates. My heart, my heart goes in sympathy to Greg's family and loved ones. Um, <clears throat> and especially when here, especially Dario, Tony, Max, John Potter, and the medical team. I mean, he, Greg was a, was a very good friend of all of ours and, and part of our family. Um, Greg's memory and everything that made him such a great guy will live on in all of us forever. And just reasonably well and very well. Uh, we have to hopefully come together and celebrate his life. And uh, we'll carry on with his legacy, uh, like other great British Columbians, Terry Fox and people such as that. And Greg Moore was just an outstanding Canadian, an outstanding citizen of the world. You know, we say goodbye today to a great friend, a uh, wonderful role model, uh, just a terrific human, and, and it's just a very, very sad time. Many on a rather somber note. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Three days after his tragic death in Fontana, California, Hundreds attended a private service today in Vancouver to say goodbye to Greg Moore. David Pratt has more. Flags were at half-mast in Vancouver on Wednesday as friends and family of Greg Moore gathered for his memorial service. Moore's entire family, led by his father Rick, were a part of the congregation that grew to well over 1,000 people. Also, many of the biggest names in racing were on hand, including Jacques Villeneuve, who flew in from Monaco, as was former teammate Patrick Capontier. Dario Franchitti attended with Ashley Judd. During the service, Franchitti spoke of his great friendship with Moore and of his great loss. All of the drivers chose not to speak with the media following the service, but there were some who took the opportunity to share their feelings. Not only was he a great race car driver, but he was greatly loved and greatly admired by so many people around our sport. And I can only tell you that everybody in our sport today feels an incredible sense of loss on what is for us and indeed for everybody, a terrible tragedy. Those of us that um, knew him just reasonably well and very well uh, have to hopefully come together and celebrate his life. And uh, we'll carry on with his legacy, uh, like other great British Columbians, Terry Fox and people such as that. And Greg Moore was just an outstanding Canadian, an outstanding citizen of the world. You know, Greg's friendships go worldwide and, uh, you know, he touches just absolutely so many people uh, from the fans right through the everyone in the motor racing community and in the sports world. It's just, uh, it's just a sad and tragic time. For the many fans who stood in the pouring rain for much of the afternoon, it was also a final opportunity for them to say goodbye. I don't even feel the cold. I feel warmth in my heart just being here to pay my respects. Even though I can't go in there today, uh, just to be here to say goodbye is my own special way. He just uh, means so much to everybody in Vancouver throughout the world. I'm sorely missed. During the service, Rick Moore ended his tribute to his son by explaining how he and Greg talked every day, even when Greg was halfway around the world. It was one of many moments in the memorial that brought much of the congregation to tears. The service lasted nearly two hours and ended with a lone piper leading the Moore family out of the church. Jackie Robinson once said, a life is not important except in the impact that it has on other lives. If indeed that is true, then the full impact of Greg Moore was felt by the many friends and family who have now paid their final respects. David Pratt, TSN, Vancouver. And there are so many others who wanted to pay their respects and they will have a chance tomorrow in Maple Ridge, Moore's hometown, a public memorial service at Maple Ridge Baptist Church. TSN will have coverage tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, that is 9.30 p.m. Eastern. You know, on Wednesday, about 1,200 friends and family gathered in Vancouver to say goodbye to Greg Moore. Thursday, more than twice that many showed up in his hometown of Maple Ridge for a public memorial service. They ran out of places to put people, Rod. They packed the church, the hall downstairs, a tent outside. They came from all over the province to pay their last respects to a Canadian hero. 
Greg Moore represented Canada, or Maple Ridge and Canada, on the world stage at the highest level of competition. He was proud to say he was from a small town called Maple Ridge. Everybody said, where's Maple Ridge? And he said, Maple Ridge is my town. Thursday was an so opportunity anyway, we, uh, for that small you know, town, the town of Maple Ridge, it, uh, where Greg Moore grew up to pay their last respects. Greg, me, Greg. Some mourned, some reminisced, but every one of the over 3,000 in attendance were there to celebrate his extraordinary life. He was nice and he was the bestest car racer and he um, always was a nice person to all of us. He certainly was a wonderful person and a, a, a great role model for our children, too. It's very sad. Greg Moore died when he was 24, but his spirit will live on forevermore. He was, an, he was a Maple Ridge driver that everyone loved, and now God will take care of him up above. He died doing what he loved best, and God sent, him, God sent an angel to put him to rest. Greg the human being, Greg the individual, was somebody that set a standard, I have children of my own. I can only hope to have this kind of relationship with them that uh, Greg, uh, sorry, that Rick and uh, Donna and Donna shared with Greg. He was a wonderful young man, very proud of his family, very proud of Canada, but particularly proud of Maple Ridge. We are all very proud of Greg's professional accomplishments, however, we are most proud that he stepped forward as a role model for the young men and women of our community and the nation. He demonstrated the importance of setting goals and working towards to achieve them. And so many people have been inspired by Greg. But for us who knew him well, I know what he'd be saying. Hey guys, lighten up, have some fun. Remember me as I was, a regular guy, had a great job. I love people. Love life. I never felt I was better than anybody else. I was lucky to have the best job in the world, great friends and family, and I really lived my 24 years to the fullest. For years to come, Greg Moore will be remembered for many things. For the tremendous competitor he was on the racetrack, for the great ambassador he was for this country, and for Maple Ridge, the community he grew up in, the great friend that he was. Glenn Suter, TSN, from Maple Ridge.